fidgeting can be an extremely hard habit to break. Good thing I don't want to break it. Uh, anymore. The first time I realized I fidgeted was when my kindergarten report card came in with a bad behavior grade. Because apparently, the teacher thought it was my fault that the boy next to me found my fidgeting more entertaining than learning to count. Which to me didn't add up. But I did what any grade-motivated kid would do. Tried to stop fidgeting. Six comes after five, and seven comes after six, and eight comes after seven, and nine. Whoa. What? And eleven comes after ten. And twelve comes after eleven. Oh, I hear using my hands. That wasn't quite right, but I was pretty convinced. And I wanted to be able to hear, so I figured I probably shouldn't stop. So I didn't stop. Ah, high school. A place where everyone accepts and supports each other. I don't know why people always look at me funny. All I do is twirl my pen and bounce my leg really fast. And so what if I rewrite the lyrics to my favorite album over and over again instead of taking notes? So maybe I chew my hair a little because it crunches and kind of tastes good. You know what? I'm just trying to pay attention. In fact, I think you're all the weirdos for staring at me. It's not that interesting. I'm getting an A, baby. A quick round of applause for Gum for being the reason I could fidget subtly in class without being stared at in my college. But I also fidgeted outside of class, something I didn't realize until I moved to the dorms and people pointed it out. I really thought that college would be a fresh start, but I'm still the weird kid, even now. Why am I so different? Well, I am diagnosing you with an autism spectrum disorder. This fidgeting you speak of sounds like stimming, an autistic behavior involving repetitive movements. I was glad to know there was a reason, but it felt like I now had a big sign above my head. A label that said, this person isn't like you. A sign everyone else had seen for years, but I had only just realized it was there. I was self-conscious. I wanted to turn it off. Immediately, I noticed people were nicer to me. They stopped staring. It was all working out perfectly. Or so I thought. Did the electricity in the walls always buzz that loud? Were the seams of my clothes always this itchy? No, something's wrong. Were the lights always this bright? Okay, something was really wrong. I can't focus on anything. I just have to get through this one thing. I just have to get through this one <coughs> It turned out stimming had a real purpose I didn't know about. Most people's brains filter out extra sensory information from their environment automatically. My brain, because of autism, didn't do that by default. If I stimmed, then it would. And if I didn't, then my brain would eventually get so overwhelmed that I'd have what's called a meltdown. Nowadays, I think stimming is pretty awesome. And I've bought a lot of fidget and sensory toys that help me do it more often. Keep watching to see me demo them and hand reveal. I guess why be ashamed of my body and my brain for working the way it's supposed to? I'm an autistic person and I'm going to act like an autistic person. I might as well be comfortable and be proud. And that's why I can't stop fidgeting. I have a confession. During that time period I tried to stop fidgeting, I couldn't fully stop. It would still happen occasionally, almost subconsciously, and it would usually be scratching my skin. These fidgets really helped me redirect behaviors like that into healthy ones. All of these fidgets and sensory toys will be linked below. If you buy any, it gives me a small commission at no extra cost to you. Also, these aren't just for autistic people. Anyone could use these. You might know about this one. This poppet is my daily go-to that I always have in my bag. It helps me calm down in various situations. I also have the poppet in a frog form. This fidget cube I keep in all of the pockets of my coats. I use this when I want to be more subtle and not draw attention to myself. Another subtle one is a soybean keychain. I could put it on my bag or in my bag and just carry it with me. This sensory brush I think is also a shower brush, but it feels amazing. Everyone I've ever let feel this has gone out and bought one immediately, which I find very funny. It is also extremely, extremely calming. Okay, now we're getting into the spiky things. 
When I want to scratch myself, I often use this ball instead to be kinder to my body. It has a very gentle pain sort of feeling. This ring can also give you a pain-like sensation, but not actually hurt yourself. Finally, this ring also gives a gentle pain-like sensation if I want to redirect my scratching behavior. This is called a Tangle Junior. I use this when I'm watching TV or I'm trying to think really hard because it doesn't make a lot of noise. Finally, this is a head scratcher. I use this when I'm like zoning out and trying to get back to reality. I hope this was somewhat interesting or some of these could help you out and I'll see you next time.